Hi guys, welcome to another video on iDraw. I'm really excited about iDraw and seeing the new things that are coming. Um, if you check out iDraw's Facebook page or their Google Plus page, uh, you'll be able to see some awesome features coming in uh, version 2.4, which I think is just around the corner. So be looking for that. Let me go back to the Facebook page. Here are some of the features listed using uh, CSS right from your vector graphics some core gra graphics code export, uh, exporting layers and slices. So um, abilities to, to really take assets within your document and, uh, and, and save these as uh, web-friendly, uh, HD, uh, retina display-friendly graphic files. They've got a, a redesigned layers pane, a smart duplicate, which looks really awesome, a transform panel, which I'm really looking forward to. One of the things that um, Illustrator and Photoshop both have with uh, their vector shapes is the ability to, to warp some of these things. So I'm hoping that you can do some of that stuff. Multi-path editing pixel preview mode. Uh, I think that's going to be great for people like myself who do a lot of web, web graphics. Sharing shape libraries, that's awesome. I use the shapes all the time. I save new libraries. Um, one thing I don't, I, and I've had issues with this, It's it's not a huge deal but being able to to rename them i don't know if that's going to be possible that would be awesome i've got some of the other people's um icon packs in here all as vector shapes uh, captain icons free icons i've got my own uh, vector flames that i've drawn and then uh, traced and i draw to be vector shapes and so uh, being able to create these shape libraries is a huge time saver, and I, I love this feature of iDraw. So I'm 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 only even more excited that you be able to share these and um, and hopefully have some more flexibility with using those shapes as well. A new arc tool that's going to be cool. Creating text on path and and creating arcs have always been a little bit finicky in my experience. And and there's some more stuff you can you can uh, check it out. Like their Facebook page, so you can follow that. Also their Google Plus page, they put a lot of updates and stuff out on there. For this video, I wanted to show you, I've got a document open here. This is for, um, it's kind of like a long postcard, really. It's a, it's a registration card as well as a flyer. So the design of this is going to, you know, let, let the people know when this event is, uh, along with all the information that, that would uh, be necessary for them to know about it as well as the back being a registration form that they can then just uh, hand in or mail in. And you see here, this is one of the things that I love using iDraw for. So I'm, I'm looking forward as well to some of the, the updates to the layers panel, but I already love just being able to have layers. When you've got an object-based uh, software, what I mean by that is you know, any any vector program where, see, I can click on this and just edit this this group um, all of these little individual pieces are stacked on top of each other. They're not uh, pixels that are all merged together that I then have to cut out. Like Photoshop, if you're just using the roster capabilities of Photoshop, not the vector shapes and that kind of thing, because those will automatically create new layers. But that's the thing is it'll put everything on its own layer, which which is nice, and you can put those into groups, and, and I'm not complaining about Photoshop. That's the way that they've chosen to, to make it. But when you've got uh, applications like this where everything everything is editable and, uh, and you can manipulate it and move it, it's its own separate object, or you can put them into, into groups and so that the management of the document doesn't have to be quite as extensive. At least that's that's how I use it. You don't have to have 64 layers just for a document like this. So I have chosen to, to have a single layer for the front of my document. This really helps me. When I want to export the entire canvas, I can just hide every other layer than the one that I want exported. So I can create the front and the back of this flyer in the same document. That really helps me. I've got less files in folders to have to manage. Uh, I could send this iDraw file to somebody else, and they've got the front and the back all in one file. I can also see much quick, much more quickly the relationship as far as the design between the front and the back just by clicking that little tick box. So there's the back, there's the front. I've also put in a, a little box here for my trim marks. Uh, this, this will show me the actual size of it. So everything inside of this kind of transparent red box around here 
is going to be safe and everything outside could be trimmed off. And that really helps as well, making sure that all of the important information isn't too close to the line, that uh, I've got everything lined up nicely and, and have a little bit of breathing room around the entire design. Um, you can also use guides. So I've got some guides set up in here as well so that I can um, <clears throat> align things to my, my center and then have I've got uh, safe safe margins where I keep all of my text inside here. So you can see that I've got all my text inside this innermost guide. And then I've got a trim guide, etc. Um, so you can turn those on and off. The shortcut key is the same as Photoshop. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, on a Mac it's just command and uh, the semicolon key. So um, I also use the, I've shown this in another video, but I, I use the, the space outside the canvas a lot for sort of drafting and, and sketching and kind of coming up with ideas. As you can see, this, this million dollar shot uh, changed a little bit by the time it got down here. But uh, this is where I started. I can just start building out in here and then sort of drag in pieces as they're ready into the actual canvas area. And so I, I, was, I was more happy with this, um, this design and uh, it ended up being all, I just put it all into a group and it worked out very nicely. So there's just some design tips in there as well as I draw tips. Um, so uh, I, I love iDraw. I hope you're excited about it. If you're using iDraw, there's there's already so much that you can do with this in a very fast, simple interface. I mean, I, I go to this so much more often now than, than Photoshop or Illustrator. It opens just about instantly. I'm really looking forward to the 2.4 update and seeing what what things that they've what they've added. I hope to hear what you think about it. I haven't tried it yet because it's it's not available. But um, check out their Facebook page, check out their Google Plus page, and they've got a couple of videos on YouTube that are uh, previewing some of these features. Check out iDraw. I think it's a great um, alternative to some of these other more expensive or subscription-based applications. You can create some fantastic-looking designs with iDraw. Professional all the way, in my opinion. It's a young piece of software. So for for as as young as it is, for, you know, it's only been out that I know of um, not very long. And so it's still, it's still being developed and they're adding new features in 2.4. So look for that to come. Thank you for watching. Check out iDraw. Watch for more videos to come.